Okay, so welcome along to the first in a series of uh, question and answer sessions that we're going to be um, videoing weekly. Now, th this will be complementing the, the Q&A section that we have on the website, so there's always lots of information there, but we thought we'd just bring some of the, the question and answers to life. So, we've got a list here, so we're going to get through um, three today, and so Paul, you want to go first? What products can you use as a vegan uh, alternative when baking cake? Um, now, I've never really baked a vegan cake before, so the first thing I do is just Google it. And when I Googled it, there was hundreds of recipes came up straight away. So the BBC uh, Good Food Guide has got lots of, lots of recipes. And the first one I looked at, it was a chocolate cake. And there's a little bit of, a little bit of vinegar and uh, lots of uh, vegetable oil. Um, always to help get the moisture from the cake. So, um, so that that'd be my first uh, topic. Just, just Google it. Um, there's also, um, is it baby cakes? There are specific bakeries that will bake um, allergy-specific recipes and cakes for you. Yeah, if you don't have time yeah. and you don't want to bake, then you can always obviously uh, get uh, from uh, specialist bakeries. But if you prefer to to bake, then uh, I would just Google uh, vegan recipes. It's the best way forward. Yeah, well that nicely leads over to, to the topic I'm going to cover and it's um, about the, the recent changes in the law um, to allergens and food and more the, the, the kind of labeling, labeling and informing customers of what's in uh, food products. So the rules changed on the 13th, 14th of, of December and it affects all EU countries um, so everybody's on the same sheet. So it's it's really about um, informing customers about 14 allergens that are in food. So um, I'm not going to have long enough just now to, to go through everything. Um, but if you follow the website, we'll have the website at the bottom, but it's food.gov.uk. And you can download this little booklet. And it's, it's very easy, step by step, uh, what you need to do. And it covers, you know, labelling or you know, you can you can tell the customer exactly what allergens are in there. Um, also, your your environmental health officer will likely have been in touch if you're registered, um, just to cover their their interpretation locally of, of what's involved here. But it's something. It's now legislation. We now need to be doing it. So, just just have a look. It's it's an easy read. Um, bedtime reading, I wouldn't suggest. And, and always, uh, every local uh, government will be slightly different. So that's when, when David's saying about speak to your environmental health officer, um, because there's always little tweaks in different areas. So always best to speak to them. Makes it nice and easy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so um, how many days in advance uh, can when cakes be made? So how long is a piece of string? Because it just depends on your cake. Um, so if it was a fruit cake, a traditional sort of fruit wedding cake, uh, then of course you can make, you can make it uh, weeks in advance because. Uh, obviously, it's, it's got a long shelf life. Now, what you've got to remember if you did a fruit cake, if you make it too far in advance, then your sugar paste or fondant is going to go really hard. Uh, so, I would say in probably two or three weeks before for a fruit cake. For a sponge cake, it depends on what cake you make yourself. So, uh, when we had the cake shop, um, we used an oil based cake, as you'll probably know, um, and we've got the chocolate recipe on the website. Uh, and that meant we could cake, start a cake on a Monday. So, it means Monday when you come in, you can start uh, ganashing and bring your cake to life. If you're going to use a Victoria sponge, uh, which is very, very fresh cake, uh, and it's made from butter, not oil, uh, then I would say you want to be baking the cake on the sort of Thursday, decorating on the Friday for the wedding on the Saturday, mm -hmm. and then it's really not going to last much longer than that. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully that answers your question there. So how, how long in advance, if you were baking then freezing a cake, do you take the frozen cake out and that would... be Leave yep. it for a day to defrost. So yep. So um, so if you wanted the, 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 the sort of freezer style, uh, you can bake the cake up to three months before the wedding. Okay. So uh, and we get a lot of students who um, they work full time, and what they actually do is they, they ganache the cake. So they bake it fresh, then they ganache it nice and neat, pop it in the freezer, uh, and in the week of the wedding they can bring it out on the Wednesday uh, and let it defrost overnight, then ice and finish it on Thursday, Friday for the wedding and Saturday. Mm. And that's absolutely fine to, to do that uh, as well. I even know some students have iced the cake, then froze it. Uh, the problem with that is you need to give it about a week to defrost, so uh, because what, it goes a bit watery. Yeah. Um, so personally, I would just do the ganache part and then freeze it. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's the end of our questions today. Hopefully, that's been helpful. Um, they're all in the Q and A section of the website as well. So, I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.